I just wanna let you know that this video is part of our career accelerator course on cybertrainingpro.com. So if you enjoy the content and you wanna see the full course, head on over to cybertrainingpro.com or check out the link that's in the description. All right, let's do this. One of the common mistakes that new and existing cybersecurity professionals make when looking at jobs or thinking about skills to pursue is that they focus way more on what they personally want than what an employer wants. Why is this a mistake? Well, for starters, the employer has to feel comfortable with what you bring to the table to actually hire you. If you're unemployable or they want to avoid hiring you, what's the point of doing any of this? In this training, we'll talk about reading between the lines of job postings to identify what matters to that employer. The better that you can do this, the higher your success rate will be. We're going to start by discussing the purpose of job postings, then we'll move on to the problem that exists with them. From there, we'll discuss job tasks and why they matter. Then we'll discuss how experience, education, and certifications fit into the equation. Finally, we'll wrap things up by talking about winning in this career field. Okay, so what's the actual purpose of a job posting? Believe it or not, but the true purpose of a job posting for a company is not necessarily to find a candidate that has 100% of the requirements. In fact, companies rarely expect to find somebody who matches everything in a job posting. In an ideal world, the job posting is gonna describe what a candidate is most likely to do when they start the job on day one. Depending on the hiring life cycle, the job could change when you're onboarded or shortly after that if it takes a while for you to start. In reality, companies look at all their needs related to hiring somebody and some of this stuff gets summarized in the job posting. This can be why you see specific job postings that seem like dream sheets full of requirements. If a new hire can meet at least 60 to 70% of the requirements, that's considered a pretty decent hire. The more requirements that are met, the better, but that also increases the price that has to be paid to that employee. I'm sure we could all relate, but there's absolutely problems with job postings. Job postings are never perfect and certainly they can have their flaws. If you haven't noticed, we've already hinted at some typical flaws. For starters, companies tend to list too many requirements such as tools and technologies compared to what's required. This results in the next big issue, which is the job posting doesn't accurately reflect the job that's being filled. If a job posting mentions firewalls in Cisco, it's reasonable to assume that a candidate is going to deal with Cisco firewalls, but that's not always the case. We also might see unrealistic expectations in areas like certifications. A typical example of this is people getting fixated on having a CISSP as a requirement for a junior junior or entry level job. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that can relate to that. The other major problem is that the posting has vague or ambiguous information that makes it difficult to visualize what that job actually involves. Let's shift gears and discuss job tasks listed in job postings versus the reality of what that job actually requires. The job responsibilities described in a job posting can tell a lot about that specific role. One of the first things I look at when reading through a job posting is where the main focus tends to be. For example, do the job responsibilities frequently mention technical skills with actions like configuring or administering? Or does the job posting focus on the non-technical aspects like communication with other employees, project management, or similar activities? Another important indicator is the level of detail that's provided. Not only does that indicate the proper understanding of a role many times, but it also reveals more about where you're gonna focus. How do you feel about the experience requirements listed in job postings? I'm curious to hear about your thoughts on this, but we know that companies don't always get it right. Experience requirements in job postings can be hit or miss when revealing more information about a specific job. I'll be honest, some companies assume that if you have a certain amount of years of experience, you'll know certain things or be capable of something. Many of us know that years of experience don't always equate to knowledge or relevant experience, but that's just how it is. Years of experience and overall experience are typically optional. That said, companies use years of experience to determine salary ranges which could place you at a certain job level. For example, entry-level candidates usually have zero to three years of experience, but a mid-level job might be more like five years of experience. You also might see within the job description that it's a different level of job than indicated by the years of experience listed. As you better understand the different levels of jobs through experience, this is gonna become more obvious. Let's take a second to talk about Cyber Training Pro. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, 
or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. All right, let's get back to the content. So how does education fit into the equation? Education is the next area that gives people problems when looking at job postings and deciding where to apply. Specifically, I'm talking about if a company lists anything about a degree. Literally, from all the people that I've spoken with about this, if the words required or preferred show up, plenty of the people aren't going to apply. First, I want to set you straight and tell you that a degree is rarely a mandatory requirement for jobs in cybersecurity, although it can make you a more competitive candidate. With that being said, specific considerations can apply. One consideration is that specific industries, such as those performing research, government, military, education, and some consulting companies might have firm requirements for degrees. We aren't going to dive into the specifics as to why that is, but you need to understand that difference exists. The second consideration is the job level because higher level jobs like management or some senior level jobs are going to either require or highly prefer a degree. Are you aware of the certifications that we have in this career field? Next to education, certifications are another area that people struggle to look past in job postings. One common complaint that I see a lot is that entry level jobs require a CISSP certification. Although that complaint in today's job market usually results from a misunderstanding when reading the job posting, it certainly is one that we've seen in the past. Employers seek specific skills or knowledge like education and certifications are an easy way to identify your level. Certifications aren't typically a firm requirement on their own unless, for example, you work in the U.S. government, which does have specific certification requirements based on the job. You can frequently substitute listed certifications with similar options, assuming that they're known in the industry. You can also show your knowledge and skills by posting videos, written tutorials, participating in bug bounty programs, or capture the flag exercises in many other ways. Not all these ways are created equal and might not satisfy the requirement entirely, but they can absolutely help. Again, certifications like education help make you a more competitive candidate and it makes it easier for an employer to determine your skill set. So how do we tie everything together and ultimately win? That's the real question. Look, it's nearly impossible to predict or to get 100% success rate when you're looking for jobs. There will always be that employer who decides to go off the rails and do things that don't make sense, but you can't control that. At the end of the day, if you can identify what's important to the employer, your success rate will be significantly higher, and that's a fact. It may not be a perfect job posting, the job might change, but again, control what you can control, leading you to more wins, that I can guarantee. Question of the day, how well do your skills and knowledge match what employers are asking for in job postings? Let me know down in the comment section below. Take this knowledge, identify what's important, and exploit it to land the opportunities that you want. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.